with us, ladies and gentlemen, the CEO and President for Mavenir. We have Mr. Pradeep Kohli. Well, thank you. Um, you know, I was coming here actually for a meeting with Gio, uh, and uh, Matthew called me day before yesterday saying, okay, we have this summit going on, and we would like to talk to you about how carriers can use open source to innovate new services. So I thought I'll come and talk about, uh, you know, what, it's actually, uh, it's an interesting topic, first of all, because carriers have been losing this game for, I think, last 20 years. And uh, if you look back, um, you know, when things were very well defined, there was a PST and phone, plastic phone. You had a dial tone which carriers could offer. That service, you totally 100% nailed it, right? You pick up, dial tone came, everything worked. And then it was, you know, 1G, 2G services. It was a feature phone or it was not even a feature phone, 10 digit numbers. All you could do was make a phone call, maybe short SMS, it worked great. I think the game started changing when, the f and until that time, of course, network was smarter than the phone because network was telling phone, you can only do these five things, voicemail, SMS, MMS, make a phone call, and that's it. I guess 10 years ago, iPhone came, Android came, phones became smarter, and that's where actually carriers lost the game. Because now the phone has become smarter than the network. And in fact, actually the problem, other problem is that your competition has changed. You know, so I've been kind of in the industry since 1990, working for the vendors. I'll talk about it a little, little bit. But it's actually a very difficult problem now because carriers are regional. Like Geo, you know, okay, you are the biggest operator in India and... Of course, but you're still serving Indian market. But you're now competing against companies like Google and Facebook who are serving worldwide market. So they can actually take their R&D dollars and spend on services which they can take to the whole world. And they are adopting open source and they are taking new technologies. And on the other hand, the carriers are actually, not only they are regional, like AT&T or Verizon, even if they are big, they're still only 100 million subscribers versus you know, Google and Facebook can do billions. But on top of that, you have another problem. Well, actually, we together have another problem <laughs> that we, as I think uh, you and uh, uh, other players before me, other speakers before me talked about all the uh, Linux Foundation and all those open projects. But we have a boat anchor called 3GPP, where five, six vendors get together. So if you look at Ericsson, Nokia, Samsung, you know, whatever, right, five, six players. They have probably 1,000 people within that company. So maybe put all of them together, maybe 5,000 people, get together and determine what is best for all of us. So they determine that, okay, 5G should be done like this. And they sit together in very fancy hotels, very nice places, next to beaches. And of course, they come together and figure out a 3GPP spec, which then only they can develop. And only they know how to answer those questions because they are the one who came up with it and the rest of the whole world has to follow it. So in a way, actually, it's a very, very unopen, right? There's no openness about this whole industry because the way it is constructed. So we can, unless we change the game from the very beginning, we'll be only playing on the edges. You know, you can do, like, all the examples which, you know, you pointed out, Mr. Chong pointed out, they are still on the fringes, right? You took an SD-WAN and made it open or EPC made it open, but the biggest money which you spend in the access space, in the connectivity space, is a closed circuit and very difficult to penetrate it. So I think unless that is cracked, it'll be very difficult for a carrier to achieve the same level back again. 